The purpose of this video is to talk about the production process whereby a business purchases inputs, uses it in a production process to create outputs like wood or wheat and they sell the outputs and hopefully the money that they raise from selling outputs is greater than the money that they pay buying the inputs and they turn a profit. Two examples that we might consider here is fertilizer being an input and you plow more fertilizer so you get more wheat to harvest or we might think about an input being waiting another year for trees to grow and when they grow you get more wood and we can think about waiting another year as an input because it's a decision you make that increases the amount of wood you can harvest. It might help you if you viewed another video on drawing and interpreting tangent lines because we're going to be doing a lot of it in this video. But let me give a, a quick primer in this. Suppose we have, we're thinking about the impact of X on Y, <clears throat> and that impact is given by this production function that I'm tracing right here. And we want to know how X impacts Y at any particular point and often what we do is we draw a tangent line at that point. It's like if this is X equals 2. And the slope of this tangent line is positive and that slope tells me how Y changes when X is increased by a little. And the fact that that tangent line has a positive slope, it tells me that you put on a little more X in the production process and you get a little more Y. Contrast that with this function that I'm tracing here, where at any particular point, if you trace the tangent line, if you draw a tangent line, at that point and you notice that the slope of the tangent line is negative. Well that means if you use a little more of input X you actually decrease the amount of Y that you produce. How an input increases or changes output in a production process can exhibit three patterns and so that's why this video is concerned with the three stages of production. And for stage one I want you to meet a very special tree. This is a tree that actually has a name. Its name is the president. It's one of the largest trees in the world. It's over 3,200 years old, which means it was a baby before the Roman Empire was even Rome. And it's over 250 feet tall. And, this, and the type of tree is a sequoia tree. This tree is particularly interesting in that the older it gets, the faster it grows. Now, Usually, for people and most animals, the older you get, the slower you grow. If you're watching this and you're 18 years old, you're still growing, but you're not growing near as fast as you were when you were 8. Suppose our job is to grow sequoia trees and harvest them for wood, and we want to look at the impact of time, how many years we let the tree grow, on the amount of wood harvested. Now because this tree's growth rate increases over time, its production, what we call production function, the translation of time to wood harvested, would look something like this. And I say that because when the tree is young, a tangent line to the production process, the slope is a positive number. But as we let the tree age, the slope of that tangent line becomes even a larger positive number. Now remember, the slope of that tangent line will tell us how wood harvested changes when we increase time just a little. So this means when you give the tree a little more time to grow, you get a lot more wood when you do that when you're old than when it's young and you give it a little more time to grow. 
And this is what we call stage one of production, where the productivity of an input is increasing the more that input you use. Suppose that instead of wood, we were talking about wheat. And our input is fertilizer. And we want to see how fertilizer impacts wheat harvested. If it was the case that fertilizer on wheat exhibited stage one of production, then it would look like this, the impact of fertilizer on wheat. And what that means is that when, when you haven't put down much fertilizer, when there's not much fertilizer on the wheat and you put a little more, you get a little more out of wheat, you harvest a little more. But the more that of that fertilizer you use, the bigger the more wheat that fertilizer gives you. So fertilizer it gives, is giving you more bang for your buck the more the fertilizer you use. Now this is not something that we tend to see. We tend to see in the real world that the more fertilizer you apply the less productive that fertilizer is. And so we don't see stage one of production much. We do see a lot of stage two. And stage two exists when an input is productive, it's giving you more output, but the productivity of that input declines the more of that input you use. And let's suppose that we're talking about the impact of fertilizer on wheat. In stage two of production, the production function will look something like this, where the first bit of fertilizer that you put on the wheat has a rather large impact because the slope of that tangent line is positive and large but the more fertilizer you apply the smaller that slope becomes and that means the more fertilizer you apply the less additional wheat you get from that additional fertilizer fertilizer is becoming less productive the more you use and we can also think about this being the case with cattle, if we're producing live cattle for slaughter and our input is time, how long we let the cattle grow, again we would see something like this where when the cattle are young they're growing very fast and the slope of that tangent line is large and positive whereas as they get older they're still growing but they're not growing near as fast. That is stage two of production. Now you may be thinking to yourself there comes a point, if you let the cattle get older and older and older, they'll actually stop growing when they're a mature adult. And as they reach the elderly years, they may actually decline in weight. And you would be exactly right. And you would be thinking about stage three of production. Stage three is when an input is not productive. You use more of an input and you actually get less of your output. And you might see stage, uh, stage three will look something like this, where you apply more fertilizer and you get less wheat. And if you look at the slope of the tangent line, that slope is actually negative, meaning you apply a little more fertilizer, you get less wheat. And the same thing can happen with cattle too, of course. And, In this last graph, in this last part over here, I want to show all three stages together because for a lot of production processes, we might expect to see all three stages of production. Where with stage one, the input is becoming more productive the more that input you use. In stage two, the input is still productive. It's helping you produce more, but its productivity is declining the more of that input you use. And then there's stage three where you use more of an input and you actually get less output. The input is not productive. And, that, and so when all three stages of production exist, the production function translating an input into an output has that shape. A final word is about the profit maximizing amount of an input that someone, a business, would purchase. If we're thinking about fertilizer, 
how much fertilizer will they purchase? When will they stop applying fertilizer? If we're talking about cattle, how long, how old will they let the cow grow before they slaughter it? And what we find is that the profit maximizing input use is somewhere in stage two of productive. So you stop using inputs when they're productive but becoming less productive. And here's how to think about it. When you're at stage one of production, you would always want to use more of the input. After all, in stage one, an input is becoming more productive the more you use it, so you tend to use more of it, and you keep using more and more of it, and you go out of stage one into stage two. And then you would never want to go into stage three because that would be a case where you're paying money for an input, but that input is actually reducing the amount of product that you can go out there and sell. And so for those reasons, the profit maximizing input usage will be somewhere in stage two of production.